Hello everyone, welcome to my class. A new class, some new concepts to learn. Today we are going to discuss about screw gauge. Okay, so without wasting time, let's start the class. Students, before starting the discussion on screw gauge, let us first try to understand the principle of a screw. Okay, I hope you might have seen a general screw at your home, isn't it? A screw is used for many purposes and you might have observed that it had some threads at one side and there is a pointed part. And what we do when we need to put it or insert it somewhere, we apply a screwdriver and we keep on rotating the screw. Okay. And you can clearly observe. See now I am rotating the screw. Okay. See, you can find that the head of the screw is moving ahead. Isn't it? That means it is following a linear motion. I am rotating the screw and you can clearly observe that the distance is increasing in this way. That means it is going in this direction. It is following a linear motion. Isn't it? That means here if I rotate once, it is moving certain distance. And that distance is nothing but the distance between two consecutive threads of the screw. Okay. In general, the distance between two consecutive thread is one millimeter. With one rotation of the screw, the screw moves a linear distance of one millimeter. This is nothing but the pitch of the screw. That means pitch of the screw can be defined as the linear distance it travels whenever the head of the screw follows a complete rotation. Okay. Hope you understand. Today, generally, pitch of a screw is equal to 1 millimeter or 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay. So, this is the pitch. Students, as we have discussed that by the rotation of the head of the screw, we can have the linear distance. So, and to measure small length, the head of the screw is made large and it is graduated by the scale of divisions. The divisions might be of 100 divisions or 50 divisions. So the scale that is on the head of the screw that is called the circular or head scale. Okay. The scale of the circular head of a screw. Okay. What is it called? Circular scale or head scale. You need to remember this. Okay. Now, as we have discussed about the pitch, let us now discuss about the least count of a screw. Okay. Students, in our earlier classes, we have already discussed about least count. What is least count? It is the least possible value of the measurement. Okay. So, in case of least count of a screw, we have already discussed about the pitch. So, what would be the least count? Least count is equal to pitch of the screw, okay, divided by number of divisions on the circular scale. Circular scale, okay. In general, the circular scale has 100 divisions or 50 divisions. In accordance with that, we can find out the least count. So, if the circular scale has 100 divisions, circular scale has suppose 100 divisions. And generally, pitch of screw is 1 millimeter. So, what would be the least count then? Pitch 1 millimeter divided by 100 that equals to 0 0.01 millimeter or we can say 0 0.001 centimeter. Okay. So, in general, least count of a screw is 0 0.001 centimeter. So, how can we define the least count of a screw then? The least count of a screw is defined as the distance moved along the axis by it in rotating the circular scale by one division. That means when we rotate the circular scale by one division, what happens? The screw moves along the axis and the distance traveled by that particular movement is nothing but the least count of the screw. Okay. Hope you understand. 
Students, let us now discuss the least count of different types of screws where the number of divisions on the circular scale are different. Okay. And let the distance to cover is 1 millimeter. So if the number of rotation is 1 to cover a distance of 1 millimeter and the number of divisions on the circular scale is suppose 100. So in that case what would be the pitch? Pitch would be 1 millimeter only because pitch is nothing but the distance traveled by the circular scale on one complete rotation. So what would be the least count then? Pitch divided by number of divisions. So 1 by 100 millimeter or it can be written as 0 0.01 millimeter or 0 0.001 centimeter. Fine. So if the number of rotation is 2 to cover 1 millimeter and the number of division is suppose 100. So what will be the piece then? It is half millimeter because it is covering a distance of 1 millimeter in two rotations. So the piece would be half millimeter that is 0 0.5 millimeter. So what will be the least count then? Piece divided by number of divisions. So 0 0.5 divided by 100 that is 0 0.005 millimeter or 0 0.0005 centimeter if the number of rotation is 4 and the number of divisions are 100 then what would be the pitch 1 by 4th of a millimeter because it is taking 4 rotations to complete 1 millimeter or it is 0 0.25 millimeter so what would be the least count then 0 0.25 divided by 100 millimeter or it is 0 0.0025 millimeter, 0 0.0025 centimeter. Okay, so in this way we can find the least count of any screw having number of divisions 100. So let us find if the number of division is 50. Okay, if the number of division is 50, then what would be the value of the least count? In this case, if the number of rotation is 1 and number of divisions on the circular scale is suppose 50. So, what would be the pitch? Pitch will remain constant. So, pitch will be 1 millimeter only. But what would be the least count? It is pitch divided by the number of division. So, 1 by 50. That would be equal to 0. 0 0.02 millimeter or 0 0.002 centimeter. Fine. So, when number of rotation is increased by 2, what happens? The number of divisions remains constant. Suppose it is 50. So, what is opening over here? Here, the pitch is 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay. So, what would be the least count then? It would be 0 0.5 divided by 50. Okay, so it gives us 0 0.01 millimeter or 0 0.001 centimeter. If the number of rotation increases to 4, keeping the number of divisions on the surplus scale at 50, so what happens to the pitch again? It would be 0 0.25 millimeter. So what would be the least count? 0 0.25 divided by 50 that would be equal to 0 0.005 millimeter or 0 0.0005 centimeter okay so in this way we can find out the least count of different types of screws okay students let us now discuss about screw gauge okay screw gauge is a measuring instrument which is generally used to measure the diameter of a wire the thickness of a paper and so on we can measure up to the third decimal point that means we can go up to 0 0.001 centimeter of accuracy but in case of a micrometer screw gauge we can go up to the least count of 0 0.0001 centimeter that means we can go up to 1 micrometer okay this is the least count of a micrometer screw gauge okay so let us now discuss about the screw gauge in detail okay students as you can see i am holding a screw gauge in my hand it has a u-shaped frame and one end is flat this flat end is called stud and this end is along with a cylindrical sleeve so this is called the knot having a cylindrical sleeve 
and the knot and the sleeve they are threaded from inside we will see that very soon okay and another cylinder that is a hollow cylinder actually it is rotating over the sleeve see this is rotating and let me take it out so that you can see see when i take it out you can see that see it is being threaded inside and this rod which is flat at one end it goes through the sleeve the sleeve is also threaded from inside and this is the hollow cylinder which has been threaded and this is the circular scale you can also see in the diagram that the hollow cylinder is having the circular scale graduated over it so what happens over here this hollow cylinder actually it is over the main scale of the screw gauge actually the sleeve is graduated with a scale that is the main scale and the sleeve goes inside the hollow cylinder when we keep rotating it okay we can keep it rotating and you can clearly see that now the sleeve is going inside the hollow cylinder and you can observe that the circular scale goes over the main scale of the screw gauge the this part of the screw gauge which can be used for the rotation purpose is called the ratchet the base line is fixed and when we rotate the hollow cylinder it goes around the base line and what we do actually we keep the object in between these two flat ends see when i rotate after the complete rotation you can see that there would be no gap between the flat ends so we can do one thing we can put a wire between the two ends so that it can be tightened and then we can follow the principle of screw to measure the diameter of the wire okay hope you understand students today we have discussed some of the concepts of screw gauge hope you have understood everything clearly if not please watch the video again go through the book read out everything properly and practice i hope you would understand everything clearly so as i always say keep practicing keep revising and most importantly keep smiling